you'll find a copy of the life scheme actually uh, in the centre of the um, service. Family was the most important thing to my mother, and she would consider all of your family, and I'd like to share that in these thoughts. Margaret was the second child of Reginald Alexander and Emma Jane, otherwise known as Jean Christie. She was born in Nashville on the 31st of August 1938. They lived at 1 Waratah Street Punch Bowl during the war years, and it was here that she spent her early childhood years. In 1945, they moved to the property called Delview in Blackheath, living here until 1947, when they moved to Lura. Mum tells a story about the fires that went through the Blue Mountains during those years. And on one occasion, her parents were both out fighting the fires, and she was 12 years of age, holding a single garden hose, trying to water down the roof um, for many, many hours, until she actually ran out of water. She ran the the um, <coughs> tank out of water and ever since then mum never liked fires mm. they were always scary to her 1950 uh, and later that they lost uh, a house in the fire and all of their personal possessions so a lot of the family memories with photos and things were all gone in 54. in 1953 52 i apologize 1953 they moved to strathfield where it had been intended to have a boarding home for students at the Strathfield School. Um, that didn't last, um, but Mum did her final year of high school at Strathfield and is in the very first Strathad, and I'm very proud of that, along with my grandparents. Uncle Brian, her brother, whom she was always close, was then at Avondale College. From Strathfield they moved to Cabarita, where for a time she worked as a clerk, and they attended Concord Seventh Adventist Church. Also attending Concord Church at that time was Ivan Francis McCrow. It was love at first sight. When asked what she wanted to be, Mum would say, a lady with a baby in a grocer's shop. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was fun. But that's in fact what really did come true. Um, because after meeting Dad, they agreed that he would work for the family while she took on the role of wife and mother. And this is something that she did with enthusiasm all her, of her life. Family was everything to her, not just her own family. But this mother's love extended to the nieces, nephews, cousins, aunts, uncles, the children at school, all the families at church, everywhere and everyone. Three children were born to Margaret and Ivan, David in 58, Colin in 1960, and Jeanette in 62. We originally lived as a family at Lodomir, and one of my favourite memories was special out at Parramatta, where we had the annual Christmas pantomime. And as a special treat, we ate in the cafeteria, which is really hard for me because I had to learn to eat lettuce with a fork. <laughs> I couldn't eat lettuce with a fork. But we loved David Jones because they had a lift, and at home at Lodomir, we had a sliding door. And we had hours and hours and hours of playing lifts. Um, I, I won't go into any further with that one. In 1966, we moved to a hobby farm at Matcham. We loved it. Mum hated it. Um, we had 16 acres of delight. Actually, David tells me it was 30 acres. I forgot about the other 14 acres on the side. We had cows, goats, a cat, a dog, and of course, a resident diamond python, uh, which used to live in the roof. And the roof used to, it was an old house, old farmhouse, and the roof used to hang down above mum's bed where the python used to sleep at night. <laughs> but it was here that we had the famous Cousins Club. Actually, the Cousins Club had started earlier, but um, with um, Uncle Brian's um, girls, Sharon and Fiona and Robert, and not in that order, I just, and I wasn't picking Sharon first, by the way, but just how it came out. We had lots of adventures, weeks-long Monopoly games, puzzles, mashed banana and cream, Welsh rabbit, which I'm sure is still Robin's favourite. Yes. Yes, it is, absolutely. For those who don't know, it's you, you put the cheese, the, the cheddar cheese and the, and the bubbles up. But the best thing we had here was, of course, we all had measles, mumps, chicken pox, all of us, you know. So one would get sick and Auntie Pat used to send her girls down so we could all get sick together. And I know we all had mumps and measles together. It was an amazing time. 
Then at that time we also started Pathfinders, and Uncle Brian was originally the club director, and then Mum took on this role for seven years. Seven years of rain at every single camp, I like, kid you not. Until Saturday night, Sunday morning in front of the fire, drying out the sleeping bags. Who remembers that? I'm sure there's a few of us that actually do remember that. And interestingly, when Steve Smith took over from Mum, he was there for seven years and they had no rain at any camp. <laughs> so that says something about my family. <laughs> We were also part of the original 17 um, children at Central Coast Admin School and it's really lovely that Sue is here with us today. We are actively involved in fundraising activities like growing potatoes, lots of fundraising concerts to help pay in school fees. Our family worked at cleaning the school for many years. Mum applied this um, to commercial cleaning to help support the family after we finished our school. And our family grew again because school family was included as part of family. Margaret was an excellent cook and she used this to help support the family making vegetarian pastries and pies, wholesome bread and lots of other items for the local health food store for many, many years. She was actively involved in health education programs for the church, running many vegetarian cooking demonstrations and bread making classes. Dave and I remember her first loaf of bread because we kicked it around the farm for about three weeks. It didn't pass. But she did win first prize in the Royal Easter Show. But she had to go in three or four years in a row because she kept on winning it for white and she wanted to win it for whole milk. So she persisted until she got whole milk first prize and that was one of her pride and joys. Mum loved gardening, especially roses and pansies. And each of you, or as many as we had left, Later on, we've got some pens for you to take home if you would like to plant them. Um, she became actively involved in flower ministry and uh, I know did a lot of floral um, tributes in church um, and later on, that blessed the whole congregation. We next moved to Roomba where David, uh, Jeanette and I spent our teen and early youth years and it was a common sight in those years to have cars dropping off kids who would stay with us for the whole weekend. Mm. I know my wife Penny called my mum, uncle and auntie for two years because we're a group of people who all grew up together. Dave Martin who's here, happy, used to come up to our place for the weekend a lot, didn't we? We had lots and lots of fun. And everyone was made to feel part of the family. Um, we then, before they moved into Bourbon Street, um, Mum became acute real and had major bowel surgery. She actually died on the table two times, so they tell me. But her life was saved because God had more planning for this loving wife, mother, and soon to be grandmother. When we moved to Bourbon Street, um, there was new family members joining, with David Newgood marrying and Penny marrying myself. And now, although we were independent adults, we were always welcome. Then came the first grandchildren, with Sky, Amber and Trent being born while at Bourbon Street. And there was more love to give and always plenty of love for all. Mum loved having grandchildren in her life. And there are many, many special birthdays that were held here with awesome birthday cakes and all the family together. There was a significant time of financial hardship and the house of mine had to be sold. And a block of land was purchased at 7 River Street. An old house was moved to the site to be renovated. It was a huge sacrifice for mum and dad, but they were used to hardship. Yeah. So they moved in with David and Ingrid and the girls, and they all lived together for a number of years while the renovation took place. River Street, mum says, was her house, and it certainly was the house that all of the family felt was at home. Um, and there'll be many things that we'll remember from that time. More grandchildren came to loving care when Matthew and Aaron would join the family, and mum and dad also spent a lot of time uh, down looking after Matthew and Ellen uh, as Jeanette at that time was working full time as a doctor. The garden at Seven River Street was a special joy for Margaret with many roses. I used to come down from Queensland at the time and we would spend every year in June pruning the roses and moving them. I don't know how many roses I moved around that garden, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Um, and said, oh no, I think it would be better in that spot. But the best thing was, after we'd done all that moving of the roses, we would sit in front of the fire, crank up the wood fire, have a wonderful wood fire, and so many wonderful memories around that fire, which uh, I know there's a few more things to be shared there. Dad was diagnosed with rare form of emphysema while at River Street, and suffered significantly toward the end of his life. 
I'm going to to the addition of the care of the family took up a full-time carer role of Dan as his condition deteriorated. His wish was to die at home, and Mum was there for her soulmate. His death was a huge loss. With her own health deteriorating, a decision was made to move to Crestville in the independent retirement unit. She really enjoyed her time at Avondale, especially visits from Fiona and Lionel, Sky and her nephew Ross, and Lydia and others who all lived close by. Everyone else also visited, but she really often talked about how it was wonderful to have family close. They were a source of joy and support for her, and her unit was a little ray of sunshine, as anyone who visited will uh, attest to. She still enjoyed some gardening as she was able. But while she was less mobile, there was one thing that she still could do, and that was talk on the phone. <laughs> and I know lots of us had lots and lots of talk with Mum on the phone. But a personal visit was much better because there was hugs. During late two, in 2020, her health began to deteriorate quite rapidly. She had multiple health problems. And after a period of hospitalisation, she moved into Avondale House. And as Penny said before in her prayer, she received excellent care from the staff of Avondale House. She believed in the resurrection morning. It was her further wish that when she wakes from death, she not only will see Jesus, but all of her family will be there with her beloved Ivan. As we said goodbye, I shared this text. My favourite, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, for there shall be no more death, or sorrow, no crying, for all these things have passed away.